quickly show you how to animate this in After Effects, uh, again using the Puppet Warp tool. So say I'm um, going back to maybe more of the tropical theme that we were going with before. Actually, I've got all the... Uh, actually, I think I have that sunset. It's on the server though, isn't it? The sunset yeah. kind of thing. So rather than importing it off the server, I'll just bring it in to my local computer. This one here? Yep, so let's copy that. Okay, so um, it just kind of suits the, the vibe of that a bit better. All right. So let's just quickly throw that in above here. Uh, we might just have to kind of hide the leaves for this one. All right, so say you've got that still happening. Looks good still. Probably will just move everything across. What do you reckon? Um, let's just quickly do that. Hopefully I can just shift in. Go to that end position and shift everything across. Okay, so that should still now just over there. I make it look so easy, don't I? Um, it, I mean, After Effects just takes a bit of getting used to. All right, so what if we wanted a, a bird to kind of fly, I don't know, maybe past the camera? Um, I won't do this fully, but I'll just kind of give you the, the, uh, the process of it. Um, so I'll just like to just collapse all my layers. Okay, so let's import, uh, so again, I've got to just um, go into Photoshop to prepare this. Okay, there it is. So um, the good thing is you've already learned how to do 2D animation. Um, so it's really about preparing your assets so that, oops, so I'm just so that they can function in the way that, that use, is useful to you. So what I'm going to do is just quickly do a, um, cut this guy out from the background. And I'm going to just do it rough as guts just because um, you don't want to be watching me fiddling, fiddling around for too long doing this. Um, so I'm actually selecting the background and deselecting the subject. You can do it either way, but this is just what I'm doing, and that's just how I roll. But if you um, yeah, do it the other way, that's fine. The, if I hit delete now, it's going to um, obviously delete my background. If you want to tidy it up a bit, another thing you can do before you hit delete is you can go um, select uh, inverse, and so now the bird is selected, and you can go to select um, refine, uh, where is it? Uh, Select and mask, it's called now. It used to be called refine edge, but you can basically use this as a way to automatically detect the edge and clean up your, your selection a bit. If I turn up the contrast, so what you're looking for is a nice clean outline around it. And you can even add while you're in this little window and subtract. So it's a really good way to clean up um, your selections. Should, oh yeah, if you use, I think it's this tool here, you can basically draw around the edges. Is that right? Not sure. There's one tool where you can basically get it to sort of really um, refine the edge. Okay, that's it. Uh, that is it. It's actually having trouble finding that edge because it's so similar, I think. Anyway, you can um, have a play with that. You can basically use these tools to kind of smooth the edges out, feather them so that they're kind of a bit softer, um, or contrast, which does kind of the opposite of feathering. Anyway, I'm just going to hit OK with that. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to reinvert it, select inverse and hit delete to get rid of my background. Um, now, as you might have kind of imagined, 
you can either just save this as it is and use a puppet warp to kind of make it flat, or you could cut the layers out and make them pivot. But let's not do that, that's going to take um, a long time. So we'll just use the puppet warp tool. So, yeah, bird. Yeah, I did a pretty bad job of cutting that out actually. It was probably better before I messed with it in the fine edge tool, but it's fine just for the demonstration. Okay, import file. We're going to bring the PSD file. Um, and now it's going to basically be on a transparent background. If we just float it in, we can basically make it maybe fly, maybe fly from here, and then maybe over the camera. So, um, yeah, so to take care of the flapping, um, just use the puppet warp tool. So again, let's put a pin there, put a pin there, put a pin there, maybe here, 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 and then maybe just on there. So you've got a little bit of um, options. So, um, so this should hopefully be the fun part. You kind of just need to manipulate the body. If, if parts of the body move that you don't want to move, you can basically add pins or there is a way you can actually click on that and if you click on show mesh, you should be able to actually uh, freeze parts of it, I believe. I think that's what the start, starch tool is. Um, and if you go back to the puppet pin tool, so now I should be able to, I don't know, that didn't do anything. Uh, there is a way you can basically freeze certain parts of it. Not too sure. Um, but yeah, if in doubt, just add more pins, and those pins should basically keep that part of the layer kind of frozen, like so. Okay, um, yeah, cool. So let's start animating it. Up there. I probably should have worked backwards with this, but anyway. Maybe let's do that actually. We'll start from the beginning and then. Okay, cool. So let's add, add a point there. Okay, so if we um, kind of just, just nudge them slightly just so that they kind of. it creates a keyframe there. And then what we'll do is if we use the page down button, tap maybe four or five times. Then you can basically make it go to its new position. And how picky you have to be kind of really depends on how big the bird is in frame. So if you kind of want to save yourself a bit of work, just don't make it so big in frame. And you kind of need to maybe just make that compress a bit. All right, so what we can do is just basically just test one movement. What do you think? Does that look okay? Yeah. And then you don't have to keep doing that over and over. You just basically use the these keyframes to, um, and then you copy and paste them. Okay, so we just select those all, expand them out. Uh, just a little tip: if you hit the the little um, apostrophe key next to the number one, it makes that full screen like that, and you can just gives you a bit more stuff to look at. And I can just basically go copy. In fact, I should make sure these are included as well. Even though they didn't change, so in fact, we don't need to include them. They're probably the, the two pins on the body. So I'm just going to paste, paste, paste. And then when I do a few, I can select that whole lot, copy, paste. Oh, I'm stuck a little bit. There you go. So let's um, minimize that now and just have a look at it. What do you think? It's going to do the job. It's not perfect. If you wanted to kind of finesse it more, you could basically change the keyframe interpolation to kind of make it go slow up and fast down because that's really what it should be doing to, to stay in the air. But for the purposes of this animation, I'm not going to spend ages on it. And then all of the thing that's left to do is uh, just position it. Um, yeah, there is actually a way to record motion I just can't remember how to do it at the moment. 
But anyway, what we'll do is we'll just do it manually. So as it flies in, we kind of want him to be... Oh, hey, Steph, how are you? <laughs> just doing a little, little bird animation in After Effects. We might make it a 3D layer just so that um, you can fly towards the camera as well. Um, and then, so all you need to then animate is just the start and end position. So, again, you can just physically put him over there. So now, oops, uh, make sure you keyframe it, of course. So, again, I always like to work backwards. So, turn in your stopwatch. Go back to the start, position him out of the screen. And then, after it, Afterwards, we might have to fly over that way, but also towards the camera. So I'm going to just play with this value to make it kind of grow at the same time. Okay, so, so let's have a look at that. <laughs> what do you think? A little bit tacky, but you know, <laughs> you get the idea. Um, maybe we can just tweak that trajectory a bit. What's called that After Effects is you can sort of move the points around. You can play with the Bezier curves, like that. Yeah, <laughs> what do you think? So yeah, there you have it, how to do a quick bird animation in 10 seconds. I suppose what you can do is add a bit of bird, like poo dropping out of the bird as it flies over, just extra bit of comic, um, about comic relief. Probably what it also do is maybe put the bottle in front of the bird, or his bottle, so that he kind of looks looks a bit more three dimensional. Yeah. There you go. So it's all an illusion, but it, it's how you kind of put these things together.